world. Now, also, the Dutch government uh, is apparently looking into this. No way. Yeah, so my name is Albert with a very difficult Dutch surname that I will not... Wim van Wingarten? Van Wijngaarden. Wow, there yeah. you go. I'm now based partially at the University of Lapland at the Arctic Center, where I've been doing various research days over the last year. Uh, but I'm now also in Cambridge, where I just started my PhD at the Scott Polar Research Institute, so it's part of the Department of Geography. Um, so in the, mainly in the UK this year, probably. Right, and you have been working on topics uh, related to geoengineering, climate intervention? I, in a previous life I was a historian, historian of science partially. Oh, cool. So I got interested in the topic because climate change is an, an environmental degradation. I've been thinking about that for a while. Um, maybe you can relate, but I find it very striking that environmentalists generally agree on saying and seeing what is wrong, mm -hmm. but then their solution can be diametrically opposed. So uh, this tension between kind of the more traditional, we have to go back to nature, and the modernist way of we need windmills, nuclear, and, and maybe geoengineering. Right. And I started from a historical perspective looking into geoengineering, and I thought, why is nobody thinking about this? So mm -hmm. I, at the time I was partially working in Russia, so I w looked into the Russian people who wanted to modify the climate and the Soviet scientists. And from that historical perspective, I got more into the present and I consciously made the decision, okay, um, if there is something I want to contribute in my life, maybe as a historian there can't be so much, so I want to re-specialize and work on a topic and then I thought, Climate engineering is a topic that probably will be hugely important in the mm. in the future, for good or for bad, but I don't want to have an opinion on it so much, but I want to facilitate debate, as we did tonight, and I want to see if at least we can make informed decisions, because I saw there was so much ignorance, and I could also see that if there wasn't information, then this could be used by nefarious actors, oil companies or whatever, to their advantage if this would remain in the realm of unknowingness that um, so I wanted to tr see and try, try and see if there could be some information about this so I decided consciously to work on this and I re-specialized into environmental sciences um, and I wrote to a couple of people who are working on this did some internships some work projects with them and slowly made my way into the topic to where I am now. That's super super interesting you talked about environmentalists or climate activists or NGOs even can agree on the problem but their solutions might be very from the opposite ends of yeah. the spectrum yeah. so there's like polarization yeah. which brings into my mind this question of how, how do you see what are what what is the biggest challenge or problem in the disc discussion of climate interventions I think there are several problems one is just that it's a very scary idea uh, what we're going through and what we might do to make it less shit that's that's one thing I think also that it's very difficult to deal with problems that don't have an easy solution that is better than the other but that you have to deal right. with a question or a solution that is less bad than the other solution so that gives a completely different way of thinking about this. So I think inherently it's such a difficult topic. And then on top of that you have political tensions, you have people who hold on to different beliefs about what nature is and what you can do to it. Um, you have different beliefs in technology, you have different perceptions about economy, human rationality. I think it's such a difficult topic to think about. So of course there is going to be disagreement and then on top of that there is which for some reason was good for a while, or, or I'm not, I don't want to be too strong on that, but there was a taboo on speaking about geoengineering research. And for some reason I can very much understand that, but um, by having that taboo it also tended to leave the topic open for conspiracy or for polarization, as you said right. before. Um, and I think that also played into how the debate is up until this point mm -hmm. proceeded. And that's that's maybe one one point why we need more academics, but not only academics, but also uh, people who are influencing society on different levels to engage on the topic. Because there's so many, you described there's many many levels of of aspects that are making this discussion super complex. Like people have different views of 
how the whole universe even works, yeah. or or how how they how they view risks in their own area versus risks on the global level and, yeah. and such. Yeah, well, when you say academics, I think up until now the topic has been very academic. And right, what has right. struck me is how polite and, well, there's of course been some mud throwing, but nothing really insulting. If people get angry with each other, they just ignore each other. Mm -hmm. That's a very polite academic way of treating your yeah. adversaries. Right. But this has a, the potential to become hugely explosive. Of course. Right. Um, so I think there are already a lot of academics thinking about this, but I would like to see non-academics also mm -hmm. taking this up. This needs to be, of course, academically researched, but also a political problem, a social problem. Everybody should think about this mm -hmm. in a way. It, this might be potentially one of the biggest thing. Of course, there's artificial intelligence, biotechnology. There are a lot of huge topics at the moment, but this is certainly one of the most consequential things. It should be around. there on the top of the agenda yeah. in discussions. Yeah, and, and for it's also understandable why it wasn't, but I think it should be higher. Although I'm also scared to do that, and I feel personally very doubtful also bringing it up, even though I aim to open up the debate just by putting it out there. Right. That's already a moral thing that I sometimes don't feel comfortable with, because it can be also used, once it escapes this polite academic bubble, it can also become very explosive. I can really relate to that, because sometimes I felt the most scared after... Because I always think that we have to bring this discussion in the public sphere. Yeah. And when we have done it, I feel the most scared. That, oh my god, now this actually might be going forwards. Yeah. And what if I haven't thought through the whole thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> In a good way. I don't know. Yeah. But I have, I have just uh, two two questions left. I know you will hate the next one, but I yeah. will still ask it. Okay. Given given the situation with the climate crisis, yeah. uh, with the Earth system tipping points and all of this, yeah. should we do climate interventions? Oh no, this is. I, I don't think this is a really. A, a lot of people like to ask this question, <laughs> but I don't think this is a real question at this point. At this point, any any actual implementation of climate intervention would be crazy because we don't know if it will work, how it will work, we don't have the technolo technologies. At this point, it's, it, it would be very foolish. We have this stupid experiment with mixed sunsets where you just launch balloons and sell cooling credits. No, I think that's very bad and I think there should be public consent to many of the projects that you have maybe a different category when you have targeted interventions right. which would target specific areas and might not really negatively impact others but that's doubtful that's I don't want to judge on that uh, but at this point no um, and I'm also very adm adamant that I don't advocate uh, yeah deployment I have one question more uh, you, you you studied or you were surveying uh, different kind of climate intervention methods that have been either studied or even just brought up as an idea for the Arctic climate change, yeah. and you found something like 60 plus. Uh, yeah, yeah. So m my question is, out of these methods, climate intervention techniques, what would in your mind be the, the ones that have been researched the most, and what would be the craziest idea in your mind, or, or so, the weirdest, or so the funniest idea? <laughs> if I might take the liberty and uh, put uh, your question, put a lot of uh, Bit of a picture on it because we just published this report indeed great uh, together with you arctic um it's this frozen arctic report and we didn't research we did a literature review right so and it was also very limited because what is published at this moment is very limited on most, mm -hmm. most ideas were just put out there and then left alone so a lot of them are just that but we judged them the literature review on 12 different criteria so apart from um, uh, from attention they got, you have timeliness because it needs to be in place within 20 years, scalability, technological readiness level, um, environmental risks, indigenous uh, effects, effects on indigenous and local communities. So all these categories are hugely important and we score each intervention uh, a scale from one to three. Um, and uh, this is meant as an introduction, so people right. should pick this up. We encourage that, we encourage debate. Probably we made some mistakes because the literature is very limited, our personal capacities are limited to a certain degree. So we would like this to be a starting point for a debate. 
mm -hmm. um, and for further research. But this could also for policymakers, for researchers, and people who are interested to see the different things that are pr pr proposed and to see where they might work and where not. Because up until this point, as we discussed previously before, the term geoengineering is huge in a way and consists in all about all the projects you can think of. But nobody really has made a list of which one of those might possibly work and which ones are just Dr. Evil kind of science fiction ideas yeah, yeah. that will definitely not work. Um, so it's really available. Uh, I can give you this copy. Oh, thanks. It's a collaboration thanks. of UArctic, uh, University of Lapland, um, awesome. and Grit Arndal. Especially the crazy ones that really entertaining to work with. But it's good that we put them to the side. So some of the ideas that even though they might not work, mm -hmm. but there's a little bit more scientific backing or potential to at least explore if they might work. That's great. Thanks, Albert. Yeah. Let's You're continue welcome. with the discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah wonderful. Thanks, Thanks. for this, Anton. You're doing wonderful work. Thanks. Yeah. So where is the beehive? Uh, if you go Steve. down and then yeah. to the left, okay. at least that's where uh, I said Great. earlier. Yeah, uh, but I think... Or uh, one more down. No, here. Yeah. At one point